Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome to your weekly general horoscope with me, Raphael from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember, these readings are for all of us. They are for the general energies, trends, and themes for the weeks ahead. For the week ahead. With that said, I would like to bless my decks of cards with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity, and abundance. And I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise, and they help us all on our paths to our highest vibrational good. So these are obviously always informed by my intuition so every week I will go into my intuition and I'll ask for a central idea and or theme sometimes it's a like a mini movie that plays out in my head sometimes it's like a, a word or a phrase or a sound sometimes it's just an energy or a feeling and from this I pull that message and this is kind of like a an overarching energy that kind of speaks to all of us in some way shape or form so this week it was interestingly enough be a unicorn in a sea of pigeons, right? So no hate to pigeons, love pigeons, love all animals to be fair. Um, but the message from this was, so, you know, be a, be a unicorn in a, a whole sort of arena of pigeons. And what this effectively means is don't be afraid to stand out. Don't be afraid to be yourself. This week is going to require some form of courage to really stand out on your own, to really speak up for yourself or to really present yourself in a way that is truly authentic to who you are. And this isn't about what other people deem to be authentic. It's like, oh yes, now you're being your true self. It's not that at all. This is about really doing what you feel is right for you, being who you feel you are you know, allowing yourself to be seen for, with, how, and who you truly are, all right? So, like, don't be afraid to to fly your freak flag this week, baby. Uh, mine's always on display, so <laughs> I really don't care, to be fair. Um, I did, I did for a long time, and I've had so many amazing experiences over a lifetime that have really showed me uh, what it means to be and I'll never forget this one this was I think I was about 28 at the time um, maybe even younger than that actually I think I might have been about 26 or 27 well, anyway it was around that age and I remember having a, at that point I was having a really bad or a really hard time with like my social anxiety um, and I just constantly had this anyway this stems from something else but yeah I, I had this experience and I'd been having it for a while and I remember walking down to the the beachfront and I was stood uh, you know and I looked over the side and there were these like ducks just and seagulls and they were just you know lushing themselves in the water and just playing around and just being you know their, their wonderful selves and the message that I got from that, because it was like, as one of them, you know, like they look at you because obviously they've always got their eyes everywhere to keep themselves safe, etc. And then, you know, as they spotted me, the message that I took away from, they just went back to doing whatever they were doing. And the message that I took away from that was literally, um, do you think they care? Do you think any animal in nature, apart from human beings, really gives a flying fuck what anybody else thinks? No, of course not. So why the hell do you, right? Why do you? And that's what I took away from that whole experience. I had another one. I'm telling these stories because I hope they really help you, il help illustrate to you what is really important. Um, and, you know, and a way to digest that intuitive message that speaks to you in a very real way. So I remember around that same time, um, I got onto a bus. So I was taking a bus home and... Uh, I remember thinking to myself, like, so uh, this, these two girls got on the bus and one of them I had already spotted and just kind of thought nothing of, like, you know, hi, well, I didn't even say hi, just they sat down. I didn't say anything because it's not a thing for me, right? And then uh, a whole bunch of school kids get on and these two girls were sat here in front of me and the rest of the school kids were all sat here and you know some of them sat next to me and you know like if you're intimidated like sometimes it can be really intimidating you know when there's like a group of rowdy teenagers and you're like oh my god I don't get like that I don't feel like that but I know a lot of people do so anyway these two girls were here and then one of them like this young boy's like elbows one of his mates and he's like like this <laughs> And they all start sort of, you know, looking and giggling and giggling and giggling and giggling. Anyway, 
So um, eventually it all gets, you know, it gets a little bit much. And I thought, do I say something? Do I not say something? So I waited and then one of them uh, said, one of them said, one of the school kids said to the other, like to the boy that had started all of this, like, what are you laughing at? And one of the girls turned around and said, he's laughing because I'm actually a boy. And I never, I knew, like I said, I'd spotted it straight away and it, I'd spotted her straight away because that's obviously how she felt she was evolving in her world. Um, and it wasn't even a thing to me. Like I just let people be who they are. I don't agree with a lot of what's happening nowadays where people are trying to impose what they think and feel should be accepted on other people. But I do think everybody deserves fairness and equality and we'll leave it at that, right? Now, I turned around and said to the girl, fair play to you for owning that and well done. And then I turned to the schoolboy that had kind of kicked off this whole sort of, oh, look at this man and you know, made like a whole thing of it don't you feel like a dickhead now? And that just, the whole thing just, everyone was just like, like, yeah. And I said, because you tried to embarrass her about who she is or may feel she is or whatever, and now you actually just look like a piece of shit. I will call a spade a spade when I need to, right? I hope that gives you, and I took that away, and these two girls that got on the bus had to have been no older than 16, 17. The school kids were probably anywhere from like, I'd say 13 to 16. That showed me real courage, right? To to be who you are, to be your unicorn, to fly your freak flag. I really, I took a lot out of that that day and it was actually the start of some stuff for me because I thought, you know what, you can drop all of this like self-conscious rubbish now, like let it go. If people have got the guts to be themselves in that way, what's your excuse? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Keep it moving, right? Now, Sorry for the very long intro, but I, I hope I wanted to really help you understand this today. And, you know, some I've been fortunate in my life to have certain experiences that have really informed my work. So we've got two jumping cards for our destiny energies. <laughs> The gate 51 and shock, that's basically the tower. We've got the gate 25 and innocence. This is about truly be who you are and shining your unique light out into the world right? Maybe, just maybe, we're going to see a, a celebrity, a, a politician, maybe a footballer. I feel like we're about to see a footballer, as in a UK Premier League footballer. Um, I think we're about to see one come out uh, really soon, and I wouldn't be surprised if it was this week. I love this because it suggests that in some way, shape or form, we are all tapping into what makes us uniquely us and allowing that to carry us forward and to shine. So I'm totally here for that. All right, let's pop these back in. Right, so for our di uh, direction cards, how do we best tap into and utilize this energy, right? How do we really, okay, that card seems to want out. So how do we really do this? <laughs> We've got the sun card, of course we do, right? Illumination, baby with the King of Swords standing upright and with the Queen of Cups really allowing who we are to shine through. I'm gonna call it right here and right now. This week we see a celebrity, a politician, potentially a, a footballer. We're gonna see someone come out this week. Um, now, that doesn't have to be sexuality. It could be out of the broom closet, right? I call this the broom closet um, because in the spiritual circles, like when people used to like eventually come out of the, the broom closet and say like, you know, I'm a witch or I'm a pagan or whatever it might be, that's what we called it. Um, so I, yeah, I, I really, with this combination of cards, I would not be surprised. On a personal level, this suggests that you are standing behind something that you genuinely believe in for yourself and you are presenting yourself as a truly balanced human being because you're no longer hiding something that you feel makes you who you are. I love this, right? That um, King of Swords does suggest that there are big developments in our working lives this, for, this week. Uh, and with the Queen of Cups here, this is about us really being honest about who we are and what we love. Uh, I'm totally here for this, totally here for this. All right, so for our insight cards, what's happening around the corner that we may not be able to see or behind closed doors, etc., or what does the universe really need us to know in the context of all of this? We've got the Four of Pentacles, so 
holding on to specific ideas of how we should or shouldn't be is something that needs to be phased out. We've got this with the Seven of Swords. This is about no longer... I don't want to say that, you know, this is not about lying to people, but it is about releasing this idea that you can only be the way that people understand you to be. So this is something that I've believed for a very long time, and I've been saying this since I was a teenager. We're conditioned to be one way at work, we've got to be one way at home, we've got to be one way with our partner, we've got to be one way with this. That's just a short track to, to schizophrenia. Just be who you are in all areas of your life and let that be that, right? People can love you for it and they'll loathe you for it and none of it will have anything to do with you, right? So this week, it's time. Stop denying the part of you that really is seeking expression because the second you integrate all of who you are and start to share that from a place of true, deep honesty and clarity and beauty and self-love and self-reverence, you can and will succeed. All right, so let that be the lesson. Now, on the wider world stage, this is the revelation of a financial secret. And so somebody's pocketbook, somebody kept them receipts is all I'm going to say, right? Someone's pocketbook, someone's spendages, someone's, you know, whatever it might be, someone's transaction log, all of that is about to be laid, or, you know, all your shit beer. <laughs> okay, like someone's about to have all of their financial secrets spilled out in there with the tea so it will be interesting to see how this shapes up i will also say as well this is not a good week to get into any big financial commitments all right with that said i wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff have a fantastic week let me know in the comments how it shapes up take care and i'll see you soon